RSVP, but everybody's welcome. The event's free, and we're super excited about that. Thank you, Andrea, for um, – okay, Andrea, put it in the comments below if you want to RSVP for that event. But, um, Chris, we're extremely excited. You know, we just finished up in a, a Super Saturday in Alabama, in North Alabama, and I'll tell you, partnering with you guys and, 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 and having that synergy – as we attack the United States marketplace all over is just, for me, it's, it's, it's a blessing. I'm very grateful. I'm excited about it. And thank you for coming to that event. Well, we're excited about the event and we're glad to have you guys move on board. We don't have, really have an, we didn't have an energy drink really to you guys came on board and that we're going to be excited when you guys allow us to start getting into our normal shopping. So we hadn't got that yet, but uh, we're excited about that as well. So what do you see the difference in, with, with what you're going to be able to do in the future with, since, it's, since you came from more of a, with from Limu and now that you're going to be an RHRL, what, do you, what did you see as the big change? What is the, or what part makes you the most excited? Yeah, one of the things, obviously, this industry has changed my life, you know, or, or, and I've watched it change so many other people. But one of the things I, I've, I've realized is when you're a part of a, and I love Limu, you know, you know that. You, I have a passion for that company. I'm blessed that we were a part of it. But, when you have a company that's a, a one niche opportunity, if you're, if, you know, product line wise, there's usually a product cycle that planes over the years. And what I saw and what we see with Oryx, with the house of brands, and is, is there's not that, you know, the, the fact that people can look in the house of brands and figure out where they can redirect their spending is just, for me, that's, that's an exciting place to be. Obviously, I understand the right time and the right place. And the fact that Oryx is a company that's in 22 other countries on four continents, but virtually in the United States, we have markets, but virtually in the United States as a whole, no one knows our name, is just, I, I was involved with Limu when no one knew the name of Limu. And I got busy and I got to work. And I realize now being a part of Oryx, a much bigger opportunity, not only in the United States, but on a global spectrum, man, getting in here and getting busy and going to work, we're in a special, special time uh, in our life right now with this opportunity. Hey, Brent, tell us your background, because I know that you've obviously been in network marketing now full time for several years, but what is your background? What did you do before, before you decided that you wanted to be a network marketer? Because what makes a person change their mind? I was a football coach. Uh, I, you know, I loved coaching. I was a high school football coach, uh, head football coach up in North Alabama, and uh, went on to be a principal and an athletic director. And, you know, I tell people all the time, they ask me, why did you get into this industry? My, my you know, I had a profession, but my income and my lifestyle was just neck and neck. I wasn't putting away any money. And that worried me. I was charging my credit cards. And when this industry came to me, I saw a way to make a change. Jumped in and just was coachable, Chris. You know, I'd never done this industry before. So I found somebody that knew what they were doing. I got in their hip pocket and I did exactly what they did. I'm talking about I talked the way they talked. I, I, I did the presentations the way they did them because I just don't believe in reinventing the wheel. I believe you find somebody that's been there, they've done it and get in their hip pocket and, and just grow with them. And, and that's what I did. And, and, and I was very blessed. And so uh, that's, you know, at the end of the day, Chris, I was just a, I was a high school football coach, just uh, fighting to get by in life financially. Well, I'm going to say something here because now we know Todd's a high school football coach that went full time 20 years ago. You're high, now everybody on the call is going to go want to find a coach, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I've tried to figure out the common denominator that why the coaches seem to do well, and I, I came up with this some time ago. And Todd doesn't know I'm going to even bring this up, but I think part of it is that they have they're competitive. I believe you know so, but you don't have to be a coach to be competitive. But you know those guys that separated out, they're already competitive to begin with. They want to win. Would you agree with that statement? Absolutely. I think the competitive drive, the hustling spirit of, of a coach, but also two things I believe I see in coaches, teachers, preachers, they love to serve. 
they're, they, they are servant driven leaders in, in the fact of um, they understand that compensation wise in their field, they're not usually compensated for serve, but it fulfills their heart. And in this industry, you can have that same servant driven mentality, but you can also have the financial uh, contributions too that you can't get in, in, in the other walk. So, you know, it's, I see that, that service mentality really here and then working with a volunteer army because no one today had to get on this zoom. So Chris Doyle is definitely a servant driven leader. The fact that you can drive people to a zoom on a volunteer army coaches have the same philosophy, especially in high school. They don't have to show up to practice. They're not getting paid to show up. So you have to have things that creates the atmosphere that wants to bring them to that environment. And I also think one other thing that Brent, that, that coaches bring to the spectrum, but in other people, it's just a personality and everybody's got it in them if they want to be. And that is, Todd said to me this once, Todd, I'm going to pick on you here. Todd said, coaches have also lost on Friday night and know they got to go, they can go redeem themselves the next Friday night. So they have something bad happen. They don't pull, something doesn't go the way they want. And in the network marketing, that could be the person you thought that was going to be good or the person that, built your team and, and you thought it was going to be this the bomb that decide this ain't the right company or they want to go somewhere else or they don't just quit all in general. But coaches know that it's like, you know what, I, I can coach again the next day and get back and win next. I would call it on Friday nights. That's what high school coaches would say. But you're not, you think that there's some truth to that is that people get themselves started again? Absolutely, Chris. And, and one of the things I think me and you talked about the other day is, is rejection in our industry. One, one of the things I see with, with, with people that are successful in our industry tied to kind of like a coach is you've got to create that level playing field. You know, this is a long game here. It's not, it's not a year. It's not two years. This is something for most people, they're going to have a job in three years. They're going to have a job in five years. What if I could just go and learn and grow here and when I get rejected, I just keep moving through that rejection and understand that on the other side, there's going to be someone that says, yes, that you're an answer to my prayers. I've been praying for something. And so just that continued consistent activity is what ends up bringing and building a distribution channel in this industry that pays us for years to come. I also think you coaches are also willing to listen to other coaches. Y'all see successful people, the Glasgow's just, helped in that coaches are also coachable. And uh, I know you were with Coach Foreman the other day, so that was a coach that's had a lot of success. Whether you got any advice from him or not when you were coaching, I don't know. But uh, don't you think that sometimes people learn got to be willing to listen to the others as well? I do. I do, Chris. You know, I get – people joke with me a lot because I was in the car with Philip Fulmer, uh, national championship football coach, the other day, and I picked him up at the airport and we were driving. And they were joking with me because they said – we've driven for 30 minutes and you hadn't said a word. And I said, you're right. To me, when you get around people that's been there, they're, they've done it, they've got wisdom, you know, that's my time and my clue cue to just zip it up and listen and take in because I'm gonna grab, I'm going to steal a nugget. And, and, and I know we're about out of time, Chris, but. I say in this industry, I believe there's three things you got to do to succeed. You got to be able to lie, cheat, and steal. And people laugh. But I believe you got to be able to lie in bed at night and you got to be able to dream big dreams. I believe you got to cheat time out of your day. And Chris, you and Todd talked about that. You got to cheat time out of your day and your week to work this business consistently. And then I believe that you gotta steal, you gotta steal ideas from people that have been there and they've done it. They've got wisdom. And in order to steal ideas, you gotta listen so you can grab them. And so sometimes so many people are too busy talking, they miss that opportunity to steal those ideas. For me, I wanna be quiet and I wanna steal as much as I can. Those are great, great answers. Guys, Todd, you want to mention anything? I know you've known Brent some time because y'all are background. 
but he's hopping. He oh, he just sent me a text. He's uh, he's had to hop off. Yeah, no, no, I can I can do it. I um I do. I'm sitting here at a meeting now, getting ready to walk into it. But no, I, I've watched. I've known Brent for a long time. Watched him from a distance. I just think if, if anybody is just meeting Brent for the first time, hop on his broadcast that he when you see, uh, become a part of his RX Nation Facebook group. But Brent just has, and I'll always evaluate. But uh, as a football coach, the one thing we learned how to do early on in our career was go find football coaches that were successful, and I would go listen to them speak at conferences, and I would take – I mean, I would literally almost write a notebook listening to them. I would go back to, 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 to home in Fort Smith, Arkansas at the time, and I would implement everything that they said that fit my personality and then use my personality with it, and about two years later, uh, claim it as my own. And uh, I would encourage people to do that with Brent. Um, I, I just think Brent has a knack for this type of business like nobody I've ever seen. Uh, obviously, Chris, Aaron, you, Ken. I mean, there's just a few people that I've seen through the years that know how to go do this, and they just get it done daily. So expand another person that I, I mean, I, I don't endorse many people in the network marketing industry. People know that. I hate people that go listen to network marketing speakers that don't build a business because I think they give you all the wrong information. But now Brent's the real deal, and Brent, we are happy you are in RX. That's all I can tell you because um, we're going to take this company to another level, and I think we'll be a ten billion dollar company quicker than later. Thank you so much, Todd, and I feel the same way. I'm blessed to get to work with you. I've known Todd Rowland for years. I, I I I heard about him in the coaching field before I ever really, you know, network with him in the network marketing industry, and 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 then met Chris and and Ken, so many others. So. I'm, I'm excited. I understand, too, that synergy and working together, we can build the biggest uh, we can build the biggest building, and we're absolutely going to have a huge USA takeover with Ari. So I'm excited about that. Well, guys, we're running out of time. I think this is a great call, Brent. We're going to have you back and get your wisdom on another Saturday where we'll spend more time because I really meant to give you more time this morning. And uh, I know Ken Baby has been with us, Ken. Now, you're supposed to be a co-host, and you couldn't even get on today. And, and – uh, and Aaron Decker is out working today. We had Ginger with us. So we've got a lot of powerful people. And remember, next Saturday, guys, we have Deanna Latson. If you ever want to be on a product and learn why our products change lives, if you really want to understand what the difference is, the RX difference, I mean, I love our ownership. There's no question. Fred, Mark, I can go down the list. Riley, I mean, they're all great. They're all professional businessmen. But Deanna Latson is the pixie dust. She's what makes these products do something special that change lives for people that ma that'll make RX go to the next level because you can't just have good management. You've got to have more than that. And these products will make a difference. So join us next week, guys. We're excited about you being there. And uh, Brent, thank you again. And uh, 